You've heard the saying, don't just book it, Thomas cook it. <laughs> but I dare say you've also heard the news that after more than 100 years of trading, the Thomas Cook doors are closing for good. And whilst, of course, inconvenient to many affected holidaymakers, the real victims here are the members of staff, 21,000 of them, 9,000 of which are UK-based. There have been demands that the British government should have stepped in to save the company and jobs, but while the sentiment is understandable, it would be the wrong thing to do. Thomas Cook, whilst a much known and loved brand, was a failing business, one which was mismanaged and was bleeding cash from its eyes. Its demise was only a matter of time. Giving failing companies the security net that government will bail them out when it all goes wrong is a one-way ticket to disaster. I suppose I agree with you. Oh, um, thank you. I, I think... <laughs> uh, I'm so, so surprised. No, no, no. Thomas Cook has been in trouble for a decade, you know. Yeah. And government, I mean, with the ones... I think he's got 1.6 billion of debt, hasn't 1. it? 1.7. Yeah, yeah. 1.7 billion of debt. Why didn't the debt holders step in? Mm. Why didn't the debt holders put in the extra 200 million to save? Because they didn't think that would, it would survive. Well, they thought the Chinese would do a deal, didn't they? Yes. And they thought the Chinese would do a deal. The Chinese wouldn't do a deal. Yeah. The debt holders didn't put the money, didn't put the money in. Now, I suspect if the government had put the money in, let's not believe that would have been no. the end of it. The money would have been required further and further. Now, the only possibility. I think in these circumstances was for the gov was for government to take it over, it's government. But I doubt whether you'd have got that through, the yeah. either the shareholders or yeah. or, or the debt holders. Yeah. Couldn't get it. But but that's the that was the only possibility. I you, you put in two hundred million. So for that I buy the whole thing. Yeah. And I was, and this, and then go. But even then, I wouldn't yeah. even be happy with that. I, don't I mean, think. it lost one point four million, one point five million in the first six months it's of this year. It's literally bleeding billion. cash. Yeah. Billion. Yeah. Sorry, billion, not million. Billion. Yeah, no, it's bleeding cash. Mm. And in the end, that's what being all businesses, mm. all businesses that go bust usually go bust because they've got no, they've run out of cash. Mm -hmm. it's, a 19, no one... it's a 19th century business trying to survive in the 21st century. Mm. Impossible. Uh, Greg, you're the, you're the most experienced um, business person here. What, what do you think? the board should have been doing about these guys' bonuses. They took 20 million... Yeah. 47 million over mm. 10 years. Yeah. OK, well, in the last few years, they've taken large yeah. amounts. Uh, do you think there's a, there was a problem in the governance here? I mean, I... I've, I mean, what would you have I done have if you'd the, been I chairman over, of their, Remco, of their well, remuneration I'm committee? Someone who's chairman of a Remco of a very big bank. And trying to control it was incredibly difficult. And I do think... Uh, the chairman of Venko should be clear. I mean, I think they're going to get pilloried, yeah. uh, the, the yeah. board, yeah. because they're going to say, why were you giving these sorts of bonuses? Of course, when you are in trouble for 10 years, to attract people to come in, because yeah. they know it's chancy, you've got to pay them quite a lot of money. But then but your why... bonuses should be re um, not rewarding failure, but they should be performance. Yes, it shouldn't be, the bonuses should be based upon how well you're doing. Yeah, and that's quite challenging But I, I have a whole, yeah, as you know, I have a whole concern about the sort of money we're now paying to chief executives in this country anyway. I just think what you, you know, the jobs that used to get a couple of hundred grand a year now get two and three million a year. Yeah, and some of it is mad. I mean, yes. I'll stick up here for, for my um, old employer, John Lewis, where we limit the highest paid salary to 70 times the... 70. Seven zero. Well, it means that, it means that our chief executive couldn't <laughs> earn <laughs> more than a million quid. I mean, and that's for somebody who's what, running, a a, running, running a business yeah, that's turning he, over more than 10 if, billion. If he went into I mean, pharmaceuticals, he'd probably be getting 15 times. Exactly. The, the chief executive who is there now, yeah, who is there now, would probably walk, be able to walk up tomorrow and earn five Easy. or ten times what he earned at John Lewis. Michelle's so. central point is: should the government have bailed him out? This is what Grant Shapps had to say. Governments aren't really in the business of running, you know, uh, tour operators and, and travel agents. Um, but actually, more so, it looked pretty obvious that with 1.7 billion pounds of debt, a whole load of systemic problems, uh, we could easily have been putting money uh, up, which would have been lost taxpayers' money, which would have been lost, and still had to uh, end up uh, repatriating, bring home. Um, all of these uh, British citizens who are stranded. So, uh, it, in the end, I think it may have bought a couple of weeks. I don't think it would have solved the problem.
Transport Secretary Grant Shapps, and I think he's absolutely right. It's terribly sad, and I think we all, it's the members of staff you feel mm -hmm. for the most, some of whom were actually working, even knowing that they wouldn't get paid, they'd been yes. let go, yeah. and they were still trying to help people. One interesting point that comes out, and I, Greg, I'll, I'll come to you, but we must go into Rachel because she's not had yeah. a say. So just think on this the idea of what's called activist shareholders, the idea you yeah. actually have a shareholder who could act on that. But maybe you'll think on that for a second yeah. after we hear from Rachel. Well, it makes me feel incredibly left wing this story <laughs> I mean, well, really, I, no no i wouldn't have bailed it out but i genuinely find it astonishing that a company whose performance has gone from bobbling along in between profit and loss and then massive loss and the share and the directors and the board still pay themselves mm millions of pounds a year. They should be ashamed of themselves. They should be sat down in front of the videos of those members of staff who are working unpaid to mm. repatriate British citizens to this country and on a loop. I mean, and they should apologise to those people. Shall I people. tell you where I think government did fail? Because oh. I, I don't believe that they should have bailed them out financially. But if you remember, Monarch yeah. um, went bust yeah. and there was a review that took place to look at what happened and yeah. how can we avoid similar things like the, the um, re, yeah. re, what's the word? Repatriation. Repatriation. Yeah. Anyway, so there was all of these examples and suggestions that were put forward, including we nothing. Yeah, a seat <laughs> levy. There was a seat levy that would actually have created a fund that would have yeah. stopped, that it would have protected the taxpayer from having to bear those costs. That was never implemented. There was suggestions of um, changes to insolvency rules that would have allowed aircraft to carry on flying during that period, which currently they can't. You've got to get other ca aircraft from different mm. carriers to bring them home. So that is where I think that the government has let people down by not implementing the right. lessons learned. We can, we can um, talk about uh, the director's money and so on, but to be fair, let's, uh, I should tell you what the chief executive said uh, in the midst of this debacle. He said, I would like to apologise huh. to our millions of customers and huh. thousands of employees, suppliers and partners who have supported us for many years. Despite huge uncertainty over recent weeks, our teams continue to put customers first, showing why Thomas Cook is one of the best loved brands in travel. This marks a deeply sad day for the company, which pioneered package holidays and made travel possible for millions of people around the world. Look, I haven't got a great deal of sympathy, but the balance, let's just remember, maybe they tried their best and other parts of this group are surviving, actually. Mm. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to speak up for the management here. Shareholder but action. Let's, let's just bear in mind that maybe they've got an explanation too. Shareholder action, Greg? I'm not sure it would have made any difference here. Uh, but you do know, they have to You look at the numbers that you've just shown, the dramatic yeah. fall yeah. off yeah. this year, out of nowhere. Your cash, what do you do? And by the way, just yeah. a very quick bit of context, because sure. everyone's saying you can't have 9,000 people going onto the dole and the government should stop it. When Woolworths went under, yeah. there was nearly three times, nearly 30,000 people lost their jobs. You wouldn't advocate the, the government getting in and billing out a By the way, just one question before we move on. Michelle, can you do that? Yeah. Is that a Lady Hale um, spider <laughs> tattoo? No, it says, it says Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> it's a spider. I'm Brexit. seeing a spider.